All right, we got a nice load. It's a little mixed. I think we got some oak, some birch, and some beech in here. I see three flush cuts from three different species. There's some nice sticks. Nice load, nice load. That's what we like, full length pieces. Got the big truck today. Uh, it should be a load, I think, of uh, sugar maple, he said. Looks like a whole bunch of maple. See some red maple. Maybe some sugar maple. And this is a absolutely gorgeous truck. All their trucks and equipment in this company is really, really nice. Wow, this is a big load of wood. Normally he brings the small truck, but he said he had, I think, two or three removals today. Look at that. Oh, oh man, that is some nice stuff. We got some firewood poles in there, boys. Look at that. Some big stuff, but pretty not free. Good diameter for the most part. But look at this truck. I mean, this thing is just beautiful. It looks, it looks brand new, the whole thing. It's just gorgeous. All right, so he is about to take off and uh, he just asked me if I wanted another load of nice oak tomorrow. He said he's bringing out their crane. Uh, it's gonna be bigger diameter stuff, but you know, nice straight. I told him thanks, but no thanks. Uh, this load is gonna you know take a while to get through i gotta move it all plus i have a load of cherry all in my dump trailer that i brought home today um and i just got done loading or stacking up the load that he brought me two days ago it's all this stuff it was a mix of oak beech and birch so um the wood is coming into the wood yard which is great it's gonna give us plenty of inventory to work on for the rest of the winter and going into the spring hopefully we can get it done because this wood is uh stacking up in front of unfortunately the older wood that i have in the pile here um, luckily we can grab from both sides so that's always good uh, but basically what i'm saying is chris and i really need to buckle down stop futzing around with videos and make the sawdust fly and make big pieces of wood into little pieces of wood <laughs> so here is the much smaller load of logs that i brought home today it's a mix of mostly cherry but there are couple hickory logs mixed in on the top there all this stuff is a little or some of the stuff is a little punky on the outside you can see and some of it has a little bit of rot on the inside but most of this stuff uh it was all standing dead cherry and it was down by um, a beach and close to the water so it should have gotten you know fairly dried out over the years of just standing there with the constant wind but uh you know before it got too far to waste i wanted to bring it into the yard and we'll turn it up into some nice cherry firewood. Okay guys, and just like that, the load is gone, totally cleaned up and stacked up. We just added a whole bunch of logs to our inventory here. Um, the pile, when I got home, ended right about here. You can see I started stacking up these oak logs and everything this afternoon. So we added all of the that wood, you know, this afternoon. And this, this load of logs we got today and the last load I stacked up first is really nice stuff. There's some big stuff in there, sure, but only a couple pieces. Um, for the most part, it is smaller diameter. I'd say about 25 inches and less for the most part. Really, probably looking at it, 
it's probably about 20 inches or less. Um, and you know, for the most part, straight as an arrow, not too many crotches. So that makes me a very happy camper. I'm also very happy. I can take a sigh of relief that I got the wood yard, you know, this area here cleaned up, blown off. Um, I, you can see I organized a lot of these short pieces and cut off pieces. That's the stuff I'm going to be giving to my buddy with the wood boiler. Um, currently, the International is actually over at his shop uh, getting fixed, you know, trying to figure out that whole coolant issue thing. Um, so once I get it back, I'm going to load this stuff up into the dumpster can and bring it over to his place. And he likes getting these shorter pieces, smaller diameter. He could just cut them in half, throw them in his boiler. He doesn't even necessarily have to split them. So that's what all that stuff is for. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we got the whole yard blown and cleaned up. There were a ton of leaves and stuff all in here from all that, that cherry, the short pieces that Chris and I were cutting up and splitting in the last video. Um, we still have a little bit more cherry left to go over here in front of the Easton Maid. But, uh, you know, guys, I think it's been said before in the comments. I've definitely read it. Uh, but people have said that they think I have the neatest, cleanest, and most organized wood yard in all of YouTube. And just, you know, kind of taking a look around here, um, it is pretty darn organized compared <laughs> and clean compared to a lot of wood yards that I've seen both in person and on YouTube. And uh, I really take pride in that. I might not be the most productive wood yard. We might not produce the most amount of wood out there. Um, and you know what? I'm really not trying to. This is my hobby. I have fun doing this. I built all of this, you know, some people buy vacation homes and crazy, you know, side-by-sides, Polaris Rangers, you know, whatever. This is what I decided to do with my free time. And I think a lot of my viewers probably share the same passion, maybe not quite to the same extent as I have chosen to do here on my property. But uh, every time I walk back here and look down from the hill up here at my wood yard, uh, makes me smile and, and feel pretty, pretty, pretty darn proud to to have done all of this myself in in such a short um, period of time and not by myself I've had a ton of help from Chris and uh, many other people as well but you know this was all woods at one point not too long ago <laughs>
Well, guys, we got it all cut up. Obviously, it's getting dark, but I thought I would show you. This is all cherry, 100% cherry. Um, pretty nice stuff. There's a, some pieces that were a little bit punky on the outside, um, but the centers were good. And then there were some pieces like that that were good on the outside, but a little bit punky in the center. So with the six-way wedge on there, we should be able to work around it. Um, but that is definitely a good amount of wood all right guys so i left off last night finishing cutting up all these cherry rounds chris and i just got back from doing a side job this morning went pretty well and uh we are out here in the wood yard a little bit before the sun goes down and we are going to start splitting up some of this cherry now did you make your decision are we going with the six way or the box wedge yeah we're going to go with the box we're wedge. going with the box wedge. I'm okay a little partial to the box wedge i felt like we were just struggling trying to get the rounds through having to recycle so many splits i i like the box wedge it's boom one you got four pieces five pieces out on the bottom perfect ready to go yeah no recycling really needed uh the pullback arm does all the work for us you know exactly it, it we, we, we already us, worked hard this morning so yeah. let's make it easy on ourselves it does give us a lot of scrap but i think it's going to be well worth it yeah we're starting to get a fire going in the burn pit it looks pretty dismal but we'll get that going and we are finally going to try out something so many people have said that we need to try by putting four totes underneath the conveyor at once because all this cherry is split up and we're going to be using the box wedge we're going to be making wood pretty fast so the last thing we want to do is have to keep stopping production to pull totes out so we're going to try this whole four totes thing at a time um we did go with the long way this way just because it's easier to come in with the forks to get these things out when they are filled up we definitely realize that we're going to have to do some hand manipulation here once the pile starts growing but we will see how this works and uh yeah that that's that's what we're gonna do
Okay, everybody. We got four full totes of cherry here. As you can see, Chris is rearranging the top. And I don't know about Chris because I was waiting to get his true uh, candid reaction, but I am very impressed with how well that worked. What say you? I am impressed at the fact that we got four totes done. It felt like... How long do you think, how long do you think that took? I don't know, maybe... Well, everything was already cut up. We put a hurting on that pile. I don't know yeah, I'm, I'm about to show him the pile. The uh, pile is, is almost gone. To, for us to do this on a regular day, probably looking at like an hour for four, four, four full totes. I'm thinking maybe 45 minutes. No, this, this, okay, so this took us 57 minutes to get four full totes. But I think if we were to do, we, we never account for the time it takes to swap out the totes all that much. We, we, we know that it takes about 12 to 15 minutes to fill a tote, but then how much time does it take us to swap one out, get a new one in and stuff like that. So I think this all goes back to that video that we did where we... What did we do? Oh, where we split straight into the dumpster can and then pulled the dumpster can out and loaded four totes with the bucket and we tried to see what the time differential would be. And everybody, there was a resounding amount of people in the comments section that said, you should just put four totes underneath the conveyor. And I was a little apprehensive to do it. We just hadn't, you know, thought to do it. I, I get all these great, all this great feedback and everything, but when the time comes for us to just be out here, Chris and I just go and we go with what we know. So it's it's always kind of uh, not at the forefront of my mind to try something new. We just want to get stuff done, especially from a production standpoint. Right, because and in the winter, just, go we, ahead. Because we just need to pump out this wood, get it ready, so that we have supply to sell next year. It's not so much that we don't want to try it, but we have all this wood. We got this gigantic log pile that we have to get through. You know, it, it feels like, all right, this is working. Let's get it done. Right. As opposed to let's try something else. And, and when we get home at 3.30 in the afternoon after work and we have an hour and a half to split, we don't necessarily have time to futz around. So like Saturdays, i.e. today, is when we do have a little extra time. So we decided to try this and I think this was great. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think, think I think this works really better. well. Um, th this is the amount of wood that we have left to split up. Um, you know, this is probably only a couple totes worth. The, the amount of scrap that came out of the wood is right on par with doing a little over a cord. We got all that stuff off the grizzly bars. And then we got about, you know, a full tote top, at least. Um you know, off, off the machine itself. So I am really happy with this. I think moving forward, this might be the move. And even if we don't have time to fill, necessarily fill up four full totes, we put four under there. It catches a lot more of the, the pieces having four under there than just one. So we have to pick up a lot less pieces. Yes, we do have to move them around by hand, you know, especially for those totes in the back but i think that that this uh, allows us to just run wood and even if it isn't all cut up and chris is cutting and i'm splitting it's a lot less times that i have to go manipulate the totes or the tote underneath the conveyor because we have four so it's going to take a lot longer to get to that point that you have to manipulate it by hand so i'm really happy with this um let me know or let us know down in the comments below what you guys think. Uh, but I can easily see us doing this moving ahead uh, in the future. So the only thing that I can say that might be negative about this setup is now we have to shut down production. We need to stop everything that we're doing and we need to move four separate totes. As opposed to before when we could just pause the conveyor Jake can keep doing what he's doing, slowly load the conveyor while I move another an empty tote underneath the, the conveyor 
So it, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes us to get these four totes situated into storage and another four, four totes ready to go. Because right, right now we're dead in the water. There's no more splitting that you can do because we have nothing to catch the split firewood. Yeah, I think that is a good point and it's something to consider. But I also felt like I was in a groove there. I had my 3M work tunes headphones on. I was listening to music. You know, once you get in that groove, the you know, the machine was working good. Everything was going. And to have to stop every, you know, let's say 15 minutes and and reset, I think kind of ruins the flow. And I feel like we got we got a, more done in that 57 minutes than we would have gotten done had we spent 57 minutes splitting the old way. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I'm picking it up. Yeah. So, again, let us know in the comments. Do you feel like you guys get into a groove? You just want to keep splitting? Or would you rather do one toad at a time, take care of it, put the top on, write the date, move it, you know? Because we're open to suggestions, but I felt like this worked pretty well. This is as close as, like, splitting into a dump trailer or the dumpster can as we can get without then having to handle the wood again, I, either by throwing it by hand into the totes or using the tractor bucket to scoop it and dump it into the totes. So again, I like this idea. This is where it takes time. Exactly what Chris was talking about. Like, and there's no real way around it. You know, like you want to keep the wood covered. Wait, yeah, we don't have to cover it. I'm sure we're heading into the summer. I'm sure it'll dry. But like, you want to keep the leaves off of it and you know, whatever rain we can. And this is what takes time. So this times four, boom. It's like, almost like you might be right back to square one. I, yeah, I don't know. I hope if I had longer bungee cords. I know it's it is <laughs> it is cold. Oh, my beard just got stuck in this. Well, job well job done. Well done. Welcome back on the on the wagon or what? No, I guess you fell off the wagon. Yeah, I fell now, off. now you fell off. Thirty four days. Yep. Thirty four days. Yeah, I did uh, dry January and I went a little bit over, um, but now I'm back. But then he came to the wood yard and yeah. here we are. So, and what did he what did he cheat with? Coors, Coors banquet. banquet. But he didn't order Coors Light. He ordered Coors Banquet. If anybody, we've said it once, we will say it again. If anybody from Coors Banquet is watching, <laughs> this is a great sponsorship opportunity. If you hear somebody reach out named Rachel from a channel called Hardworking Man trying to get sponsored by Coors Banquet, she's a farce. It's a fraud. She doesn't even drink beer. So don't. Don't reply to that email. Reply to one of the umpteenth emails that I have sent you guys. Do Rich this, DIY this is, is where it's at. Send us a flag. That would be cool. That would a be really banner. cool. A banner. That's all we need. And a couple hundred cases of this stuff. Yeah. Um, but like anyway. A pallet a month. Something like that. A pallet cool. a month. <sighs> you can't take January off if they're sending us a oh, pallet no, a month, no. That was the last January. <laughs> I'm going to do for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So... That's it. We analyzed it. We discussed. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. As always, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button down below. Been getting a lot of new subs lately. It's awesome. We got some really exciting stuff coming in 2024. Some of the stuff he doesn't even know about. So I don't know there, much to begin with. There, so. There's that. <laughs> there's that. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think. But for now, I'm Jake. And I'm Chris. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time. Woo! <laughs> Woo! That's for you, Sean.